Understanding the Path to Unlocking the Muscle Up, a Calisthenics Guide. Before we begin, I'd like to give a little bit of context on my experience with this skill. I first learned the Muscle Up in 2020. I had a background in cross country and track and field, so my priorities for training were very different then compared to now. Even though running was my main form of training, I still did my pull-ups, my push-ups, and some dips. This level of conditioning was just enough for me to learn the muscle up. As you can see though, the form is not the cleanest, and this is going to be the case for you regardless of what level you are at. It is almost going to be impossible to get a perfect muscle up right off the bat, so we are going to have to drop the ego a little bit and just do whatever we can. I had a lot of inconsistencies in my early training, which is why I didn't progress as much as I do now. Now that I have been training consistently as a calisthenics athlete for almost two years, I have seen a lot of progress in all of my skill training. My muscle ups have also gotten a lot better, which is why I'm making this guide to help you get your first rep. Here is a general outline for what this guide will look like. I highly recommend you stick around for the entire video because I will be dropping a lot of tips throughout every section. Starting off, we have the general warm-up. I highly recommend that you incorporate some type of warm-up before every single session. It will help you avoid injuries as well as warming up your body, providing the blood flow you need in order to progress even further beyond. Starting off, I like to do the spinal twist. I go at about shoulder level, targeting more my thoracic spine, and then moving down to my lower hip, getting more into my lumbar spine, and then finally getting into these arm circles. It's important to understand that this arm circle is coming from the shoulder and not so much from the arm itself. I think it's easy to forget that when we warm up, we want to isolate the areas that we will be using the most in the skill. And when you're doing a pull up, it is very important to warm up your shoulders and your scapula. I really like doing different directions for my palm. So I will turn my palm up to the sky, back down to the ground, and then just overall rotating if I want to. I also like bringing my arms in and out really going pretty mellow, not pushing myself into anything stressful or painful, but just overall feeling it out, seeing how I'm doing, and then I'll hold on to my arms, lifting my chest up to the sky, getting a slight arch, and doing the same thing on both sides. And lastly, doing my wrist rotations. Wrist rotations are gonna be very important. You wanna make sure that your wrists are feeling nice and prepped before getting onto the bar. I did this entire warm up standing up. I wanted to keep it pretty simple and pretty mellow, no equipment and hardly any space. Feel free to follow along if you'd like, or also feel free to take certain parts of this warm up and add it to your already existing warm up. I always preach this, but I do believe that warm ups should be personalized to your own needs. One day might be different than the next, and my warm ups are typically based on a few hours of sitting prior to the session. I am a college student, so I spend many hours sitting down, either in class, driving to class, or just doing a lot of homework. So didn't do it in this session, but I would also do a lot of forward folds. These are also some other wrist movements that you could do, bringing your palms up towards the camera, and then bringing your palms down, and if you'd like to go even further, you could begin to curl your fingers down towards you, extending and flexing the wrists. Nothing too crazy here, just giving you guys a general idea of different movements that you could do. And if you aren't a fan of these standing movements, you could also go down on the ground. I have a separate video if you wanna check it out, purely based on calisthenics conditioning, giving you guys different ideas of what you can do. I'm also planning on dropping an updated warm-up routine. Let me know that in the comments below if that is something you are interested in. Now for one of the most important parts of this warm-up, we are going to start to bring our arms up to the sky, and as we bend the elbows, we're going to mimic a pull-up motion. We want to try to squeeze our upper back as best as we can on the way down, and on the way up, we just want to relax, allowing the shoulder blades to do whatever feels the most natural. We are also going to start to move between our cactus arms into more of a protracted state. So we're going from squeezing our upper back to spreading our upper back away from the spine, so once again, to show it from the back, we want to squeeze the upper back together, retracting the scapula, and then we want to spread that scapula away from the spine, having more of a protracted state. Chalk is always very useful when using the bar, so we are going to get into some hanging and form activation. Doing everything we just did with the scapula, we're going to start adding it with the bar. 
So we are going to retract our scapula, keeping the elbows straight, while we physically use our lats to lean back. Also doing the shoulder shrugs, shoulders up to the ears and shoulders down, as well as combining both of those motions, experimenting with each of them, and maybe just alternating every rep. Keeping the elbows straight, we're going to move between retraction and protraction, allowing your elbows to rotate freely with the movement. I strongly believe this part is the most important aspect of the muscle up, so we're going to talk about breathing and doing this hollow body pose. It is very similar to a V-sit or crunch, and essentially what we are going to do is take a sharp inhale as we pull the chest through, and then forcefully exhale as you begin to squeeze your core, allow your legs, your hips to naturally compress forward. And this is going to be very helpful in the high pull-ups. Lastly, we have conditioning. I'm assuming that you have some level of conditioning already set up, meaning that you could rep out some pull-ups and straight bar dips, no problem. The more you could do, the easier it will be for you to achieve this skill. Don't expect to make quick progress if you are already struggling to do some basic pull-ups or dips. You have to start somewhere, and I suggest just getting familiar with these basic pulling and pushing movements. You could also do one set of each before moving on to the explosive pull-ups. This is going to be your entry to the muscle up, so it is very important that we understand the right technique. Starting off, I recommend that you use a false grip. It doesn't have to be anything too crazy or exaggerated, but you really do not want to have it look like this. Having a side-by-side -side comparison, we can see that the false grip has the fingers wrapping under the bar, whereas no false grip does not. Really pay attention to where my fingers are here. You can see that my nails are visibly under the bar, whereas no false grip, you could visibly see my nails as they aren't under the bar. So to give you a better idea of what the false grip really is, it is essentially the flexion of the wrist. Notice how my fingers and my wrists start to flex down, curling towards the ground. We ran through a similar sequence in the warm-up. This is why warming up is going to be very important. We're taking the time to really get our body accustomed to these positions before exposing ourselves to the actual skill. Swinging and timing. There's going to be two phases of this motion, the forward swing as well as the backward swing. Remember the breathing we talked about earlier. As you reach your peak forward swing, you have to take a deep breath in, and right before you pull the bar, you have to forcefully exhale. Imagine that you're slamming the bar as hard and as fast as you can towards your hip. Notice that we are pulling in a curve-like motion, that letter C, and we aren't pulling completely up and down. We are not moving like an elevator, but I really want you to imagine that we have that letter C, that curve. We are essentially combining a row with a pull-up. Notice how you can visibly see the lean back on the video on the left versus no lean on the right. I can honestly go even further with the analysis. If you would like to see a separate video dedicated to the explosive pull-up, let me know down in the comments section below. And if you would like to continue seeing these types of free guides, then don't forget to leave a like on the video, leave a comment down below letting me know what you think, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It really is the best way to support the channel and to support me as a broke college student. Now we are finally ready to talk about the muscle up. A lot of the components of the skill are going to be identical to the explosive pull up. Before we go even further, I would really like to focus on injury prevention during the transition. I highly recommend having your elbows close to your ribs and not having them flared out. Having it in this way will put a lot of pressure on your shoulder and it is generally pretty painful. Ideally, you have a transition that would look something like this. But realistically, we would have something like this. Don't worry if you're doing either of these things on your first time around. The muscle up will never be clean for anybody on their first few attempts. This is why it's important to have the right intention to clean up your form because with consistency, you will see a lot of progress. If you're struggling with the transition, then I'd recommend doing an explosive pull up and trying to physically swing your chest on top of the bar, maintaining a false grip and hollow body hold as you come down. Start by swinging on the bar, just like we did for the explosive pull up. And now we want to use those legs almost like a hanging leg raise, return to a dip and then back to a pull up. Another way of thinking about it is using your body to create a letter C. So you're physically wrapping yourself over that bar and just muscling through the transition. Another reason you may be struggling is that you're trying to skip the transition altogether. If you are a complete beginner, then chances are you don't have the proper understanding nor the strength to complete this one stage muscle up. 
The transition is the hardest part of the skill, which is why you should be training at the two-stage muscle up. Once you have mastered that, then I would start training a one-stage muscle up, removing the leg hip and going for that tight, clean form. Now we're going to do a form analysis of my very first muscle up back in 2020. I had a pretty good forward swing to initiate the movement, but I did not lean far back enough to actually complete a circular pulling motion. My elbows are lagging behind and this forces my body to use a flared elbow position to complete the transition. Also notice how my body is extremely loose. I have no form of hollow body whatsoever and my legs are wide open. Also notice that when I throw my chest over the bar, my legs will also slightly move forward as well. This is one of the reasons why I highly recommend experimenting with the hanging leg raise. Your legs are going to want to come up either way, so why not just use it forcefully and tactfully in order to get ourselves over that bar. For the last video we're going to analyze is from me in 2022. The advice I would give for myself is to straighten my elbows to complete the forward swing. Also notice the positioning of my shoulders. Not only do I have the bent elbows, but on the video on the left, my shoulders are up to my ears and I complete the entire pulling motion in that pattern. Whereas the video on the right, as I begin to pull the bar down, I also bring my shoulders down away from the ears. Showing you guys the footage in real time before moving on to different variations of the muscle up. We have the no false grip, which as you can see, I enter the false grip regardless during the transition, which also provides an opportunity to work the eccentric. I do feel more natural using a false grip, which is why I'd highly recommend it. We also have the muscle up with less swing and a muscle up with zero swing, but only do this after you have achieved a swinging muscle up because this will help you better understand the technique needed and then we could work on decreasing the amount of swing and momentum over time. Now for this last portion, I wanna talk about different ways to train using the muscle up. If you have unlocked a decent rep, then you could start to crank out some straight bar dips at the end of the muscle up. Going for failure is a pretty good idea, or at least shy from failure. I typically would do anywhere from three to five muscle ups, do 10 to 15 straight bar dips, and then give whatever pulling strength I had left on these pull ups. Training the eccentrics is always a good idea to help better understand the motion, as well as using visualization during your rest time. If you have any type of bar or parallel, then I suggest using those to mimic the pulling motion and to really understand it in your mind. So to give you a general workout plan, we have the warm up and activation drills, four sets of three explosive pull ups with a two minute rest, four times muscle up attempts or eccentrics depending on what level you are at, followed by three by five slow pull ups, and lastly, three sets of six to 12 straight bar dips. You do wanna practice these with good form and our main goal will be to understand our pulling mechanics and our pushing mechanics. So keeping all the cues we talked about in this video in mind as you train. To summarize, we have the forward swing followed by the explosive pull up in combination with the hanging leg raise, wrapping your body around the bar and straightening out at the top. Feel free to pause this at any point of the video so that you can really understand the cues. Doing a side by side comparison, we see how my hip touches the bar no matter whether I have a kip or no leg kip. The main difference is going to be the amount of pushing you need to complete the transition. I'm sure you've seen Leo Wang's video on 90% pulling, 10% push for his clean muscle ups, and honestly, you could totally get there too. Continue to work your basics and get stronger in your pulling mechanics and the muscle up will be second nature. I truly believe that you can unlock this skill. Stay consistent with your training, have some patience, and most importantly, just have fun. This is usually everybody's first calisthenic skill. It provides the right motivation you need to continue your training and to reach even more advanced levels. I hope this guide helped you. Let me know down in the comment section if you have any other questions. And don't forget to like the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Much love. Peace.